All right, so today we're going to talk about verification and validation for the linear elasticity problem. <clears throat> the patch test is the way to assess that your final element implementation is correct and it's going to give you convergence. So you don't have to run a full problem to know whether or not your problem, your final element code is going to work. So you can solve a bunch of small problems that will give you confidence on whether or not your um, your final element will work for the the other problems that you're interested in. Um, some of the things about the patch test, it is a necessary condition for assessing convergence. Uh, in some cases, it might be a sufficient condition. It will give you an estimate of your convergence rate. It will allow you to check for the robustness of your final element implementation. And then it's important because even for elements that have complete polynomials, there's no constraints, like incompressible behavior, uh, you're using full integration. This And for those, th for the linear elasticity problems with these characteristics, you should expect the, com the convergence that is guaranteed by the finite element solution. But if you are coding your finite element <clears throat> yourself, you might still want to do some patch tests just to make sure that you implemented it correctly. But for more general cases where you, even even though you have checked that you've implemented it correctly, but there's some other features of the um, of the problem that you are not sure if it's going to work or not. Like, for example, as I was mentioning last, last class, if there's incompressible behavior. That's something where you don't know if your solution is going to work ahead of time. Uh, you can do some, some small tests with some simplified configurations to get a, a feel for whether or not you're going to get the correct solution. So you want to test with problems for which you have the solution. <clears throat> the basic patch test, the, the original patch test, was to apply a constant strain at the boundary for a small patch of elements and then check that if you solve the, the elasticity problem for this simple mesh, that you get the correct displacement of the of the nodes inside of the domain that give you a constant stress. So if you apply a uniform deformation to the boundary of a very simple mesh, you would expect that without any other forces, um, no body forces, no other tractions, you would expect that the solution is basically a uniform stress. So that would be the, the, an easy thing to check. You apply a, a uniform deformation at the boundary and you solve your problem, you want to check whether or not you get a constant uh, stress or not. If you do, that's good. If you don't, then you know that something's wrong, that your, your element is not able to represent this simple deformation. So that's one thing that you want to check, for example. <clears throat> More on the patch test and convergence, uh, this is a consistent consistency requirement because what, what does it mean to, to check consistency for a fine element discretization? It means that as you refine the mesh, you get better at approximating the PDE. And that's a, that's a statement about accuracy. And there's another uh, thing that you want to check, which is stability, which is that you don't have zero energy modes. And this is something that I discussed a little bit last time with the reduced integration then you might have some oscillations in your in your solution. So some patterns of deformation that are, um, you know, spurious uh, deformation modes. <clears throat> Other simple pass tests, uh, as I said, the, the whole point of the patch test is to have a very simple mesh and a, apply a, a, solve a problem that for which you know the solution, for example, Let's say that you decide on some displacement field, and then you can, for example, move all the nodes of a mesh according to that displacement field, and you want to check, uh, and you know that that satisfies that it's in equilibrium. You know some stress field that is in equilibrium. You want to move all the nodes in the mesh and make sure that it actually satisfies the equilibrium. That's one alternative to do it. Or the other one is sort of what I explained a couple of sli slides ago, which is you apply all the displacement at the boundary and you calculate the displacement at the inner node and you want to check that that displacement matches your prescribed displacement. 
Again, this is similar to what I had said before. <clears throat> uh, then, so this one, this type of, of patch test, basically there's no natural boundary conditions. You apply all the essential boundary conditions and you want to check whether or not the inner nodes satisfy um, the correct equi equilibrium. But you also want to check the, the natural boundary conditions, so that's a different type of patch test which would be, again, a very simple mesh, but now you don't fix all the, all the exterior nodes. You only fix a few. You apply the minimum essential boundary condition, and now you apply tractions. And then you solve again for the, for the displacements of the nodes, and you check whether or not you get the, the correct displacement from the, from the program that you, <clears throat> that you specify, um, yeah, from your manufacturer solution. So that, again, the whole idea of the patch test is to have a very, very simple problem just to make sure that your implementation is correct and that the problem, uh, that the final element is solving the uh, simple problem correctly. More on the patch test and convergence. Uh, this, the solution that you use for, for the patch test is not arbitrary. You can, you, you can choose some arbitrary function. Uh, but it's better to generate the solution in a structured way. <clears throat> Actually, this brings me back a little bit to the to the homework, in which you are doing a, sort of a similar approach to check your code by having a manufacturer solution. Uh, but in that case, in the homework five, it's actually an arbitrary solution. But more most of the times, what you want to do is you don't want to to have some arbitrary displacement field. Um, so you, you could pose basically any problem for which you have the, the solution and then try to solve it with the, the simple mesh. But the most informative ones are, for example, like what I, what I was saying before, checking for ex that if you apply a uniform uh, strain at the boundary, you get a uniform stress, you get a constant stress. So that would be informative. Again, you could choose some arbitrary displacement field, but it's useful to, to pick a displacement field that is uniform to make sure that you get a uniform stress. So this is, I guess, what it says here, that you could choose arbitrary solutions, but constant solution would be good because then you know that the stress has to be constant. You can think of a linear displacement field that you apply, and then you want to, to get the linearly varying um, stress field, you can have a quadratic solution. For, for example, if your elements are quadratic, and if you remember what we have done in the homeworks, for example, for the heat transfer problem that we solved with the quadratic elements, the solution was quadratic, and therefore we expect a quadratic element to solve it perfectly. So that's one way in which you can check, for example, if your quadratic elements are correct. You design a problem for which you know the solution, and you know that the solution is quadratic, and you see if your quadratic element actually solves for the exact solution. <clears throat> for quadrilaterals, uh, different patch tests, again, always they will look like very simple meshes. And that's one thing, and the other one is non-regular meshes, because you want to make sure that you, uh, you have like a challenging test for your, for your small mesh. So one way to make it challenging for your final element code is to have slightly irregular elements. So that will help to check for the robustness of your, of your final element implementation. Um, another thing that you can use the patch test for is to look, at, look out for spurious modes. For example, when you have reduced integration here, there's one example where you have, if you uh, use an element with reduced integration, you will see this hourglassing that you see in the figure B right here. Um, whereas <clears throat> if you use full integration, then you don't have that, uh, that problem. You get the correct deformation. So again, this is a very simple problem, but it, it will let you know if you expect to find some sort of instability before you want to do a full complex problem. Um, another type of patch test for quadra quadrilaterals, quadratic quadrilaterals, for example, if you are interested in some beam problem, then again, just a couple of elements. And what you want is non-regular non elements to check for robustness. So this is just one example that you can use to check for the robustness of, of a 
quadratic elements. Um, let's stop right here and then I'm gonna make another video for convergence.